Hi guys, welcome back. Bit of a weird one this time. Um, I picked this up on eBay some time ago um, and I've had it running on compressed air in my uh, my office by the computer here just as a little uh, uh, executive toy type thing. Um, but I've been meaning to actually restore this to its former glory. Now, it's a 3D printed base. I do actually quite like the base, but the problem with it is that this setup is in fact designed to be used vertically, as you can see from the vertical alignment here of the oiler uh, and the uh, uh, bearings here have been drilled on the side rather than the end. This is a marine engine designed to be used in a boat, um, that orientation. Now, one of the problems with the Lesco is that they do not sell base plates. They won't sell the base plates, they won't sell the boiler housings, uh, and so in this situation I can't actually get hold of um, an original base plate. Now I'll just flip up a picture here so that you know what I'm talking about, but these things actually have a, a vertical holder. There you go. So anyway, the um, the actual Velesco ones, the engine's leaning over very slightly. Now for the same reasons as it doesn't work like that, having it leaning like that means that the oiler isn't exactly ideal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one that is actually vertical, um, and uh, my plan is to fabricate this from brass and have it standing next to uh, or in front of uh, a little uh, a boiler. Now what I have done is removed the units from the base here, transferred those markings onto a piece of brass, so this is just standard brass. Uh, this was an old uh, finger plate, the sort of thing you see on doors. Um, so I've marked it out I'm just going to uh, take the uh, marker die off, um, drill those holes, um, and uh, my plan is to take another piece here um, and actually solder that onto the front there. So these will be standing on legs uh, on the four corners, as you can see they're marked out for drilling on the four corners, uh, and I will also uh, build a little trough around the inside of here. reason for that is um, because this is actually designed to run in a boat on, for instance, a, uh, a little pond, that kind of thing, what you are not allowed to do is pollute the water. So you, uh, you are rather obliged to catch any drips, any oily steam, all that good stuff. So I'm not intending to use it in that regard, but I think it'll look quite nice to actually have a little trough similar to the original underneath the engine itself. So there you go, um, enough talking, I'm going to uh, crack on with the build here um, and uh, speed up through the, uh, the fabrication. So I uh, hope you enjoy this, let me know in the comments down below um, what, you, uh, what you make of this one.
Okay, so the old base has been replaced by a nice shiny brass one. Now I'm in two minds about whether or not to uh, spray uh, the sides, back, base and trough uh, in a, a blue, similar blue uh, to I used for um, the uh, Jake's Whaler model. So that's a really nice blue against the brass. So uh, I think I might... Uh, might take a rush of blood to the head and just keep this uh, front face uh, in shiny brass. Certainly it's very, very shiny. We'll see how it goes. quite like it for now. Anyway, that needs to be transferred across, so let's get on with that now. Everything lines up nicely, with the uh, one notable exception that the uh, slot at the top needs to be enlarged slightly. So I'll get on and do that now, and uh, be back in a sec. Okay, so the first stage of the build is complete. I've got the uh, uh, frame uh, and the drip tray to collect. I'm just going to have to put a piece of tube on from uh, the exhaust port here, uh, just down and around the back into uh, the collection tray. Uh, I am probably going to end up painting uh, the sides, the back, the base and so on uh, blue, because I love the way the blue contrasts against the brass and just keep the back face uh, behind the, uh, uh, the engine itself. Uh, as, as shiny. Um, that will allow me to then properly seal the edges of this uh, tray as well. Uh, of course there's two mounting holes in the bottom at the front so I'll have to use some kind of uh, uh, silicon to seal those around the uh, screws that attach it in place and then the other two go through the back. So that is uh, the frame assembled. Let's just put a compressed air source onto that uh, just to see that it works. So this is just a uh, piece of rubber airline hose connected onto a fish pond pump outside. That's running nicely. Probably could do with a little bit of adjustment on the position of these legs to make it spin a little bit better. experiment with that so I'm going to have one side locked off and then the other side just a little bit of a looser fit. Uh, so these are four millimeter holes, probably take these to five mil just to give it a little bit of uh, lateral movement. But happy enough with that, that's quite a low pressure source and it's still running nicely, of course it is a double action uh, engine this one. Spot on, okay so I will uh, tweak those fittings on the back um, and on with the boiler. So I'm going to uh, end this video here. Thanks very much for watching. Um, part two is going to be the build of the boiler, which is going to be a, uh, a very efficient uh, design I've had in mind actually for a while. So this is going to be designed to go inside a model boat. So it's going to be small, uh, but with huge heat transfer space. So a little bit different from the normal sort of steam boiler that you'd see. Um, we'll see if it works. So thanks very much for watching guys. Take it easy. I'll see you next time. Cheers.